you for spending the afternoon with us. At, at Coordinated Health, we're very dedicated to having you go through the aging process successfully, just like we try to do for ourselves. And one of the keys to being able to do that is your joints, because your joints are what allow you to be mobile, and being mobile is really what life is about. If you love to garden, hike, swim, whatever it is, you need to keep your joints healthy so that you'll be able to do that and enjoy the golden years like all of us would like to do. So this afternoon, I just have a very brief presentation uh, to introduce some concepts about the joints, help you understand exactly what is happening in your bodies and how we might keep them healthy for you. And it doesn't always center around surgery. In fact, most of what we do is non-surgical. Uh, and we have a very multi-dimensional team at Coordinated Health now devoted to keeping you healthy. This is, um, if you're not familiar with it, this is when I put a camera in a joint. It's called arthroscopy. I'm able to actually see with the camera exactly what's happening that you may not be able to see well with the, um, with the x-rays or by examination. And the reason I show it here is because it shows very well good cartilage and bad cartilage. I think you can appreciate that this whole section here is deteriorating badly whereas this is still quite healthy. And there's some other structures in here, but this was to demonstrate that. When we have deterioration of our joints, we get pain, we get swelling, it leads to loss of mobility, then you don't move as much, when you don't move as much, you get worse, you get overweight, and it just starts a whole cascade of events that can lead to a lot of health problems, and that's what we wanna try to prevent. So your joints are very key for that. And it's really a lot like a tire tread. When the rubber on the tire tread starts to rip off, the tire tread's shot, and we gotta get a new tire tread. We wanna prevent that in our body. A new tire tread is a replacement, and we wanna see if we can make our tire treads last as long as possible. Within your joints, articular cartilage lines them, and it's very much like a tire tread. And so we wanna keep that tire working as long as possible. But when we get an x-ray, and this one didn't really show up, but there's a big space between the two bones, so then we think, well, okay, that's a good tire, maybe one that's only less than 10,000 miles of wear on it. Whereas the one on the far right is nearly bone on bone, so this space right here is completely deteriorated, like a tire that's at 40,000 miles, and you gotta get a new tire. So we're trying to stop that progression. Uh, but first we'll talk a little bit about factors that cause the damage and some of them are in our control and some aren't. So the ones that we are in our control we want to try to influence so that we age gracefully and stay mobile. Trauma that we have when we're 12, 13, teenage years, you're a football star, you got a bad injury or car accident or other things, they definitely have an impact on how well your joints wear through adulthood. Our genes, our genes are critical. Some people are born with a Michelin tire and some are not, it's just the way it is. You can help them though, but that really is part of it. And then our weight, our weight is really critical. We're measuring it every time you go to a doctor, they're measuring your BMI, they call it, which is based on your height and your weight. And you wanna keep that number down because extra weight contributes to wear and tear in your joint. Think of like a Big Mac truck driving on small little tires. They're gonna wear those little tires out with a lot of extra weight. So keeping your weight down is definitely critical. Regular exercise, very important. We're gonna stress that a little bit later. And then if you have problems with your alignment, if you've got a really crooked leg, you are gonna have some troubles with wear and tear on some pressure points. So having good alignment is important too. What I really wanted to show you is what it looks like when we look inside the knee. I have so many people that say, well, my neighbor got a shot and he's fine. How come I'm not fine? It's because not all damage in the joint is the same. It, it's very variable. And there's lots of things we can do if we can identify what stage of wear and tear you're at. This is what a normal joint looks like. So the cartilage here is smooth like an ice skating rink. This is a nice, uh, very little wear and tear in that joint. Some people just have minor fissures like a crack going down here. Most of the cartilage is fine. There's a small crack. I think we can 
really solve that problem easily and keep you moving. As we go further with the damage, I call this a pothole. It looks like a pothole in the road. This is the healthy cartilage and the center portion here is where it's uh, of starting to deteriorate like a pothole. And there's things we can do to help that as well. And then this one's pretty bad. This whole cartilage is peeling away like the rubber off that tire tread completely uh, ripping off. And then on the underside here is bone exposed and no cartilage left. So this is a, in the severe situation. That's going to be a lot harder to manage. I can guarantee your neighbor who got all better with the one shot didn't have that kind of damage in it. I just want you to visualize it one more way. And uh, this is an MRI here. And the little white here is the lining of the joint like a tire tread. The darker color is the bone. So this is a healthy section and right here completely deteriorated. There's no nothing lining that bone at all and if you looked at that when we open up the knee, hopefully nobody's queasy about this, but I think you can see that the, there's a whole section here where it's completely gone and that is troublesome and hard to take care of and this person ended up having a knee replacement but this is what we're trying to prevent. We don't want you to get to that stage so that you can stay moving because once it's that far gone, it's very hard to manage other than a replacement. So what are some ways that we can treat the joints and keep them happy? And again, most of our emphasis is on conservative measures and we only rely on something like a replacement if all other measures have been exhausted and you're still not happy and still not moving well. There are two kinds of shots out there now, and your doctor, I'm sure, will work with you on trying to get some shots to see if it will help. And the first is cortisone. Cortisone is like a sealant, like that first cartilage picture with the fissure. If we put cortisone in there, it'll seal it up, patch it, you'll get a lot more miles out of your joint with that one. There's a second shot called a lubricant. It's like giving WD-40 on a squeaky hinge really helps the joint function better because it's lubricated it. And um, that shot is approved only twice a year. It's very expensive. It definitely works in a lot of people, but not everybody. You may be prescribed anti-inflammatory medicines. They definitely can help. They're not without side effects, though. If you have a weak stomach, it can cause troubles. And I like to utilize medicine as little as possible. I think the less we put in our body, the better, other than good nutrition. Uh, you might try Tylenol. Tylenol is definitely safer and it can be very effective to help control your symptoms so that you can stay active and keep moving. But really, weight loss is going to have a big impact. The less you're put forcing weight through the joint, the better it's going to wear through time. Chondroitin glucosamine sulfates, I do think that by the time you've digested them, the concentration that actually is supposed to be in your body to help, uh, it's a, I think it's a big stretch to expect it to end up in a knee cartilage and become new cartilage. But definitely some people have found that they get symptom relief with it. I doubt it's growing any new cartilage. A couple of really hot topics right now are what about these other injections? There's some called PRP. That's platelet-rich plasma. That has been tried in joints. In fact, Kobe Bryant, when he went to Europe, got a PRP injection, but he only lasted another year in the NBA, so I don't know how helpful it really was. We have a PRP machine. I believe in it because I think it promotes healing, and I use it a lot for tendon recovery. That's not doing well with the inflammation kind of eating the tendon away, and I think this really helps that. The last one is called stem cells, which are really out there. And there's a lot of people promoting uh, the stem cell as well. I would really take a skeptical eye on that one until someone shows me that it makes new cartilage, which has yet to be done. And it's very expensive. And you have to be put asleep for it because they have to take from your uh, pelvis, the bone marrow, and then inject it into your knee joint. I just think we're trying a bit too much of this to expect it to achieve very much. Another type of intervention is arthroscopy. That's where I place a camera in your joint. It's three small holes. You walk on it the same day. It is not a big surgery. And it can be very successful. I liken it to a tune-up. 
you're at 20,000 miles, your tire tread's having a few problems, I go in there with a camera and smooth and trim and get things functioning again. Or think of like a forsythia bush that's way out of control and you trim it, and boy, it sure looks healthy and vibrant again. I can do that to your cartilage of your knee in the right setting. And it's only recommended if these other things have failed or if uh, we're sure it's going to have a beneficial effect. But if you're 80 years old with no tire bone on bone, arthroscopy is not going to help. But it could be very useful in the right setting. So this is pictures through the camera as well. This is that pothole one that I showed you. And one thing that I like to do for that is I poke little holes in it because I want it to bleed. This is the pothole. I want blood to fill the pothole and become a patch. I want a new patch over that. Just like you have a hole in your bicycle tire and we used to put the patches on them, it definitely helps. Sometimes it's durable, but sometimes it breaks down as well. But this is a nice strategy for small potholes to give you a nice patch so that your joints will last a lot longer. And I really, I do enjoy doing that for that kind of setting. These are replacements, partial replacement and total replacement. My colleague, Dr. Ferrante, is going to talk to you much more in depth about that. But if we keep our joints healthy, we may not need to have a replacement. But if we can't, there's always an option of getting the replacement, which will allow you to stay mobile, keep your weight down, enjoy life. So it's a very attractive alternative when everything has failed. But we really want to try to keep our joints healthy to begin with. So really the take home messages are keep your weight down, proper nutrition is key, it's very important. Dr. Mead gave a fantastic talk this morning uh, just a few hours ago about the value of nutrition and how it's affecting our body and we really need to focus on that and, and uh, realize what it is you're consuming. And then the last is regular exercise, which is so important. I have one question already that was posed to me about cortisone shots, and is, is too much cortisone bad, or can it have deleterious effects if we put the cortisone in? And the answer is yes. Too much cortisone is not good for the joint, even the joint surface. It also can have effects on your body. If you're a brittle diabetic and I give one cortisone shot, your glucose could go up temporarily. But the key thing is in excess. If we do the cortisone shots very spaciously, it can have very beneficial effects and none of the deleterious effects. So it's very important that you're not getting pounded with cortisone in the same joint. Now, if you just had one in your shoulder and in tennis elbow, it's totally fine to have one in your knee as well. But if I did a shot every month in your knee, we would have negative effects and it would be bad on the cartilage. So I'd never do that. We're very conservative with it and make sure we space them out. But they can be very useful if spaced out. Well, I'll stay, stay around if you're shy and want to just uh, approach me one-on-one. -on -one. I'm very happy to entertain your questions. Thanks so much for spending your afternoon with us, and Coordinated Health is thrilled to be a sponsor of this event, too. Thank you.